we played with how many raps were on there. We started with uh, it's three and what twenty two or twenty one to start with. So I did I did a video on this when we first built these, Chuck. And uh, when I talked a little bit in there, we talked about different mixes. We talked about 43 in the video and we also talked about 61 61 being a probably better option for 40 through 10. but the the other thing is is that when you talk about the inductance it's it's, it's actually permeability of the core the cross section of the core determines how much inductance you get per winding and that, that's mm -hmm. a permeability calculation and i walked through that in the, in the video i think it's called best core for small antennas or something like that you need to have a certain amount of inductance on your in your transformer <clears throat> because these are inductive transformers with an inductor um if you think of eli the ice guy your voltage leads your current and a capacitor current leads the voltage and so if your core is acting as a capacitor then it's acting out of phase and when your signal's out of phase you get distortion outbound and you get distortion inbound so I did a video on a Chinese NFED half wave and I said, Hey, it's 110 bucks. It's super cheap for, for a 40 meter NFED half wave. And we cracked it open and took a look at it. And I said, Hey, he's got a mystery core in here. I don't, I don't know what this material is. So I hooked it up to the nano VNA and I removed the cap because that's part of the circuit and did an open inductance measurement on the primary. And what we saw is this didn't produce enough inductance to act as an inductor on any of the bands. And that's when you have a problem with your antenna. So when you wind on these smaller cores, you need a higher level of inductance, which usually means, it means two things. You need more windings on your primary and less windings on your secondary. So things like a traditional uh, uh, two, two were at primary and 14 gives you your, your um, turns ratio seven to one, seven times seven is 49. The problem is, is that when you have all those secondary windings, and you can see here they're tightly coupled together, on an SWR meter, that's going to look fine. When you do an efficiency measurement, it's going to look fine. You actually have to look at the inductance value because assuredly that's going to be acting as a capacitor. So when you take those extra windings off, what you're allowing the, induct the, the core to do is behave more like an inductor because you're increasing the ratio from primary to secondary. That was a whole lot of nerd speak. Um, <laughs> and it's supposed to be a basic antenna video, but yeah, but you powered uh, through it, so <laughs> keep going. <laughs> well, that's probably it in a nutshell. So the 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 phase that we're going through now, the Chuck's doing uh, almost single handedly, is determining the appropriate turns ratio that we want for the antenna. You know, he's being very brave about it. Yeah, and so that yeah. that's well, why it's really it's it's really difficult to get an antenna that performs well, eighty through ten, right? right. Be now people say, well, it's got good swears on there, but the the antenna itself isn't going to perform as well as it normally would if it acted as an inductor. The other the other thing that you need to take into consideration there is the core self residency residency point, right? So every every circuit has a has a frequency that it's resonant at. And on most of these cores that you see in NFED half waves, that's somewhere around 9 to 10 megahertz. So if you look at a phase chart, what you're going to see is an inductive curve that goes up and then immediately drops down, crosses over the resonant line. And then what you have is capacitive behavior, not inductive behavior. Will it work? Sure, because we've already talked about enough conductive material in the air with enough power supply to it will, will transmit and receive but you're going to take an efficiency hit also your core is not going to behave correctly so what it's going to do is it's going to heat up the more that it heats up the less efficient the core becomes and you you risk hitting your curie temperature or saturation those are two different two different things when a core saturates it can no longer absorb and, and generate magnetic energy when it hits a curry temperature is when you actually have a physical breakdown where it loses all magnetism. There are two, two different conditions that you could get there. Now, typically, saturation leads to hitting your curry temperature. Either way, you can there have There was another question that was in here. Oh, around um, all the windings being on one side of the core. That's so my doing. I, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> That's my to, doing. To, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. I prefer crossover um, or using more of the core. <laughs> When you use these these transformers and you look at them, 
through i don't know what they're called like a, a heat gun or whatever like when you, you you point the gun at it and and what you see is where it's hot and where it's cool right the side of the core yeah. the side of the core that has all the windings on it gets super hot while the other side stays cooler the other challenge that you have when you have all the windings on the one side of them they're closer together so you get capacitive coupling there so remember i was talking about sometimes we'll take a we'll take a turn or a wrap off to reduce the capacitance so that the core acts more like an inductor if you spread those out your capacitive coupling becomes weaker and it will act as an inductor through more frequencies than it would if they were closer together i was going to say the the um the nature of these antennas is they're unbalanced antenna so common mode current is real and what you want to make sure that you're using a choke as close to the antenna feed point as as you can with the use of a counterpoise if you're choosing to be a heretic and a heathen and not use a counterpoise, then you want to put your choke a little bit further down your coaxial cable and at least prevent any of that common mode from coming into your shack.